incredible education department here, and the things they do are, are really beautiful. And this is the result of, of one of those beautiful things. This is something that uh, we did last year. In fact, we have quite a few repeats, Sergio Tiger, a few people, that uh, Sapna, that, that were here last year with us. So it's great having them back. We, I'll, I'll give you a little explanation of what's going on. I don't know. How many people here were here last year? Wow, all right. So you know a little something. This has been a gift, really, working with these young musicians. Uh, we, we're using artwork from the museum, both the, uh, the, the exhibit with uh, Chris Kalmeyer's chimes and also the permanent uh, exhibit as inspiration. These individual pieces have inspired all of the works that you're going to hear right now. We met on Monday. We talked a lot about different ways that you go about expressing the things that you feel, that you see, that you hear in the music, different ways that you can approach composition using your, your personality, your, your personal way of, of hearing, approaching music. And we work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, composing as a group, individually. Uh, some of the pieces that you're going to hear today are kind of based, that were based a little bit of on improvisation as we looked at the pieces that were projected in the classroom, people talked about the different things and how to represent different aspects of the artwork and how we could do that musically. So a lot of it came out of improvisation. Some of the musicians went home and wrote pieces individually. So you're going to hear pieces that are both very individual uh, works and also group works. And so I would say that afterwards, if you're sort of curious about a particular piece, come and talk to everybody. Everybody's really nice and accessible, except for Tiger. He's kind of a snob. So. Um, <laughs> No, but seriously, you know, please come up and say hello, and people can talk about their music. We don't have a program because we didn't we didn't really know what the pieces were going to be called or what order they were going to be in. So, this is um, again, this is this is the end result, the culmination of an incredible week of creativity. The the for us, the week was really what it was all about. For you, you get to hear the result of it, and um, um, so afterwards, say hi to to Kelly, to Paloma, Jay, Tiger, Sergio, Jaden. We got uh, Tom, Joe, uh, Zane, Paul, Aaron, and Sapna. Um, incredible musicians. We've had such a great time. So we're going to just play this piece. We're going to project the images. Once we get started, we're not going to stop and talk. So um, we are going to get started. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Oh. 
Yo, you better check yourself, consider yourself warned You mess with the bull, you about to get the horns I'm the best of the best, never been defeated Hooves on my feet, but you bout to get cleated You looking mighty young, you sure you ain't got band class? I'm half man, half bull, 100% badass You coming out unharmed? Yo, that's comical Put you in the dirt with one arm, I'm astronomical Sorry bud it just ain't in the stars, but to beat you so bad they gon' wonder what you are All throughout the streets they'll be saying what a beast he is Ain't nobody gon' remember little punk named Theseus I might be young, I just showed up a little late You better watch your tongue before it ends up on a dinner plate The real estate you live in is a maze I see you pierce your septum but your loss is just a phase I heard you eat kids, ain't there something wrong morally? You got some stank breath, got some work to do orally Furthermore, I'll have you know I don't believe the stories Strength the ten men, that's baloney, they're below me I'm floating like a butterfly, I sting like a stag beetle I'm hardcore, heartless, you could bet your bell I stab people it's over for you, lay down chief I'll cut you into pieces tonight We having broccoli beef
existence has been to please every man that's gazed upon me but all I've wanted is one to stay oh baby sway me Friends around my way I wanna feel your embrace and warm the coldness off my skin. Oh, baby, begin. Tear the ropes down, take me away, 
dance me till we define gravity. You have the power to set me free. Oh, baby, please. Oh, baby, please.
the space may commence. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, Paloma, Jay, Tiger, Sergio, Jaden, Tom, Joe, Zane, Paul, Aaron, and Sapna, and the incredible art of this great museum. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, two people have to run and go play a musical, so they're going to run off really fast. <laughs> now get out of here. Um, I'd like to. I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to do something. Um, this wasn't part of the plan, but. Um, since we have you captive. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. We have a lot of answers. I just want to kind of open it up. If, if, if you guys have questions about the pieces you saw, if there's a particular thing you saw and you wondered why it was interpreted that way, these are all the composers. So I'd love to have a little conversation. Does anybody have any feelings about what they saw or a question about anything they saw? Yeah. I mean, it's for, it, it's, it's for, you know, yeah, I, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. All right. Thank you. Say goodbye to Sergio. Thank you, man. Yeah. Right. Have a good gig. All right. Um, this, I mean, you, you have a, such an incredible uh, observation because it, 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 the whole pro, it's very subjective. And it might seem arbitrary, but, but these people thought very, and we talked and thought, and worked on this music to really represent the artwork. But it may be, you may have, if you were a musician, are you a musician? No. <laughs> yeah, but if you weren't, like you might come up with completely different things that would be totally valid. But that was, uh, does anybody want to speak about what they were feeling on something? Yeah. This is the style I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the pieces that we looked at um, had certain features that we felt that uh, like translated to like things that we could play or uh, compose for the music uh, pretty literally. Like say if we, if we were seeing like shapes, we could figure out a way how to, rep to represent it. So if we were seeing like, we looked at one piece that had uh, I think a lot of like cubes in it and we were trying to figure out ways to like represent how we could, how we could portray that through music. Um, and some other things were like, like if we saw a piece and if it, if it gave us a certain emotion or feeling about it, um, it would kind of be a more vague composition based off of that I guess. But um, that's what I took. That's like the direction I took my piece in. Um, I mine. I had like the Matisse. The Matisse one. It was like the Blue Bridge. Um, it was the second one, I believe. But like I saw it, and it it has like bright colors, and it's painted, and it's like it takes place. It's in it's in France, but like it's kind of bizarre because you see like the water is like perfectly still, and like the there are bright colors in the photo, like the I mean not the photograph, sorry, the art, and uh, it 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 makes it seem like oh like this should be like about this should this should be like a happy song. That like if you kind of think about it, it's kind of sad because it looks like it's very lonely. So I just I took like that vague emotion of it, and that's how I try to compose my piece based off of it. So. Yeah. Do you assign the artwork or the picture itself? How did that come about? Um, they chose the artwork. We had a, the second day we were here on Tuesday morning. They let us uh, come into the museum before it opened, and we we looked at the Crystal Mine. Of course, we spent time with that. We had they had signs. We played. I assigned Jay to like get the pictures from the signs and to deal with that. We um, went through the, the exhibit and a lot of the artwork you see is from the permanent collection too. So everybody chose the pieces that they felt particularly moved by. So it was all really individual, no assignment at all. It was like what, what, did, they, what did they get moved by? And then they brought that. We, we started projecting stuff. We had about 20 or 25 images at first because everyone was like emailing me all bunch of images. And then we kept narrowing it down until we had basically one 
um, per person who uh, turned out to be, right? Do you want to talk about that? Or, or oh, you no, got I the mic? Pass. I'm a mic pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna let Joe answer that. <laughs> okay, so I had the piece with the uh, oil derricks, and at first I composed something which was in like a odd time signature because it kind of feels off. It's a beautiful painting, but it's of oil, and we all know that oil isn't great for the ocean, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, I started composing, and I was like, oh, this piece kind of already exists, and I just completely removed what I wrote and started again, and I kind of went with the same route as Tiger did, and made something pretty, but also kind of weird, because it's oil. <laughs> Um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I had the the weird looking piece that was like I don't know how to explain it. It looked like a a person. It had like llamas kind of, and everything's kind of no, not that one. Almost that one. <laughs> so um, I saw this one, and I mean, obviously, when you first see it, it's kind of like it's already weird in itself. Um, and I read about it and stuff, and and I and I uh, read that is about a guy that is Cuban and. He he pursued music, and then when he came back to his his um, his home, uh, the the native like Afro American roots were gone, and, and it was replaced by tourism, and so that kind of made me think of this like uh, a beat that I had kind of heard before, but I kind of tried to put my own spin on it. But anyways, I brought that beat in and I played it, and that's kind of all I had to do because everybody here kind of had their their own interpretation of how maybe what the painting, how the painting made them feel, or how maybe they could play something along with what it, whatever it was, I don't know. But um, it all kind of came together. That I think maybe that was like the quickest piece to come together because like everybody just kind of collaborated on it. from last last year, correct? Joe, Tiger, Sapna, Sergio, Sergio and, Tom. And, and Tom. And Tom. We have five five people who were here last last year. By the way, Jim Mui was so great to help us with equipment, amplifiers, Woo! music stand. Yes. <laughs> um, the trauma player who ran off Tom, that's uh, Jim's son and he's really talented. So thank you so much for <laughs> Questions, anybody? Yeah. So I'm wondering how uh, the process of interpreting the art changes, what has it changed your musicianship or your ability to compose or just having to play music and working with that music? Paloma, answer that. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I initially came into this workshop uh, not composing anything, so 
um, I was actually really terrified because all these talented musicians were like, like spitting fire. <laughs> um, like, they were like, you know, let's get that G minor seven with a sharp 11. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so I came in on Thursday and I was like, I have this idea like of what we could do. And then Mr. Nash and Tiger and Zane helped me out. And um, I, I learned a lot. I definitely did and I'm, I'm really glad. I'm grateful that I got this experience. And um, yeah, I, I think that I, um, I know more about music now, so <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> the point. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say it was it was most definitely challenging. Just for one, like being on a clock, having a an end of the week deadline for something like very creative, very abstract that you have to start from ground zero. That's a that's a pretty daunting task. But I feel like we were all here to like support and encourage each other. We were all here to bounce ideas off of each other. We all like really put our heads together, and we all like this this experience. I guess overall, like it definitely forced us to like kind of like think about. Like really just like concentrate and think deeply about like how our art form music can be bridged to real life or like in this case another like another art form, painting, sculpture, you name it. So I think yeah, it was definitely a it was a challenge, but it was it was a growing experience. Oh yeah, so um, I did the Very Voluptuous Woman and I um, chose her because, so I, I work here at the museum and I'm an art history major and, um, and one of the main things when we have people in the museum is that you're not allowed to touch the artwork, you know, it's things that need to be, you know, saved and, and continued on and I just felt that she was made with so much love and complexion and, you know, um, com and just had a lot of, a very big soul. And it, for me, it just seemed lonely for her to be on this pedestal and, and, you know, these men and women come and admire her for a few seconds and then move on past her on to another piece. And she's like, ah, you know, like, please stay and, and keep me company. And then at night, the lights go off and she's by herself. And she's been doing this for, you know, dozens of years. And, there's, and then she goes into storage. And I just like, it's just like so sad. <laughs> and you're just like, she's. You know, I just always, you know, so when I saw her, I was just like, she just wants someone to, like, she wants to feel someone. She wants to have someone keep her company and, and dance with her. And so to me, it was a very lonely, yeah, it was a very lonely piece. And, you know, I just, I, so I wrote a piece around what she, might, what she could be thinking when people pass her by and, and she just wants someone to love her. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yay. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I um, obviously I'm a jazz musician, but I am really in love with the just like rap and hip hop music, like Kendrick Lamar and Mac Miller and stuff like that are some of my biggest influences. And um, the original thing that I based this off of was the sculpture over there, if you couldn't tell. Just I felt like it was so much conflict in there. But I also thought that it would be cool, all these musicians have completely different backgrounds, and I would be able to bring what would be unique to me, which I feel is rap. Um, I like to write rap songs as well as jazz songs, and the fusion of that I feel like was really cool, as well as just um, themes of conflict within the song, with that, um, and then at the end when 
me and Tiger were playing with each other. It was supposed to represent like a battle between the two. Um, and also, I just thought it was a really hard beat, so uh, <laughs> it, it really needed a verse. <laughs> how have you changed? How how is how is being around him changed your goals and your focus? Somebody else already answered. Yeah, I already answered. Yeah, you already answered. Yeah, you already answered. Is this working? Still on? Yeah. So, actually, I, I I think we could probably all all answer this one, but it's um it's rare to have um somebody with this level of musicianship, actually, um, that you get to learn from. And as we know, several people came from a distance as well. But I think one of the greatest gifts, actually, that Ted Nash gave us last year and this year as well is complete freedom with our creativity, which was amazing. I mean, he's obviously um, a very, very high caliber musician, but he never limits us when we go in and each one of us comes from a completely different background. Um, a lot of these musicians are jazz musicians. I'm not, actually. I'm a classical musician, and I write film scoring and television scoring, that kind of stuff. And what's really interesting is, though, we all come together, and he completely opens us up to like creativity from day one. Like everybody's already pulling all the ideas together and writing together. Um, and he wants it to be about all these musicians. So. Um, one of the big things I think that um, everybody comes in willing to support each other from the from the get-go but what he really I think allows us to do is to have a very high caliber of, of instruction um, and complete freedom which is rare it's usually you'll have a much more structured environment and we have a lot of freedom to do things really fast and and he's just supportive so that's that's probably one of the biggest things but do you want to say something Paul? Yeah, i mean you you said it really well right now oh, thanks <clears throat> but uh you know like a lot of us are still in college and high school for music and uh, a lot of times like academics take like all the fun stuff out of music <laughs> studying music you know like all of my past composition class have been like music is math music is math everything has to follow this process and everything is about uh, hitting deadlines and doing your work but from the first day with Ted all we were talking about is how to turn your emotions and what you're seeing into music and turning and like ver being very expressive and it, it, was, it was a great it was really refreshing to look at music in just that sense and then to collaborate with everyone and some of my best friends are here and it's just like like so great to be in a completely like creative environment without having like, um, yeah, there's stress because we have a deadline, but, you know, it's like, that's like the beauty of it, you know, we're all just here to create art and music. And, like, like studying with, like, other pro musicians, a lot of times they aren't great teachers, but, like, Ted is, like, probably one of the best teachers I've ever studied with. You know, he, he's very patient and very, very, he, he, he helps us, he helped, like, a lot of us grow this in just a week. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, I want, can I add on to that real quick? Just really quick. One more. Uh, I think one of the coolest things that I learned from this is that, um, like, music is everywhere. It's not just uh, it's not just when you press play or whatever. It, you can look at a painting, and, and it can be music. You can hear a, uh, any sound walking down the street. You could hear a car going by. Um, you can draw inspiration from anything, and I think that's the coolest thing that I learned from this. So it's going to be, like, you're not, like, saying I'm not inspired, I don't think that's an excuse anymore because it's everywhere. So, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs>